My name is Louise Dente, and I welcome you to yet another edition of Cultural Caravan. On well, this edition is a special because we're going to talk about a award-winning documentary that I was very proud to be part of, which is AJAZ, Pioneers of the Black is Beautiful movement, which was premiered May 2022 in New York City. And I'm joined by one of the featured uh, people that's their family, and he represents an organization called the Ilambe Breath Foundation, and he's the son of Ilambe Breath and Nomsa Breath, uh, Mr. Sinke Breath. How are you? How are you doing, Louise? All right. Well, I thank you so much for joining us. You know, uh, last year up till now, it's just been phenomenal. When I think about the process that we took in, in 2018, you and um, Barb Gums, who unfortunately is now an ancestor, um, were really that first force that really supported me as I was about in the process of pulling this story together. And I really have to thank you for that support, the support and your organization, um, the Alambe Braff Foundation, upon which you run in honor of your dad. And your your dad was a phenomenal organizer, activist, uh, pioneer. And we talk about his unique history as well as your wonderful mom, who was the uh, one of the founding Grandessa models. She was the president of the Grandessa models as well. And uh, we have a wonderful conversation with her in the film. But bottom line, we just want to talk about the, just the the experience and and the impact of that film. Um, so the film now is in its uh, first year of, of it being, being screened at various locations. And uh, um, just for those who haven't seen it, we wanna give you, um, show you a quick um, trailer of it. Let's just pause for that. The African Jazz Art Society and Studios was a powerful organization that evolved out of the Garvey movement. When we organized the Jazz Art Society, we were primarily focused on producing jazz concerts in the Bronx. The one place where we have made real progress is with hair, where black women are totally liberated in terms of hair. We didn't know um, how this idea would be accepted because at that time, the idea of black women wearing their hair in its natural state was not very popular. That was um, the beginning of what some people call the black arts movement, some call the black is beautiful movement, but it was a, a movement of the aesthetical showcasing of the black experience, the black aesthetics, which had not really been featured since the 1920s. Back then, growing up, black was not in, it was not in style to be black. My mother used to say, how are you gonna get a job now with that nappy hair? <laughs> you know what I mean? So people really didn't believe that you would fit into corporate America and uh, things like that. And when the Grand Dasa gave me a world view, more of what's going on in Africa, but all these young girls now who wear their hair in various straits of curl, kinky, half curl, half kinky, half this, one day this way, one day, it's because they have the freedom to wear their hair in any kind of way and the knowledge of knowing that they look darn good. Elambe Brath, Kwame Brathway, Chris Esmond, Desis Hall, Jimmy Abu, Frank Adu, Bob Gums. We would like to shine a spotlight on a group of brothers who came together in 1956 to form an organization that was later known as the African Jazz Art Society Studios in the Bronx, New York. AJAZ, pioneers of the Black is Beautiful movement. So, Sinke, talk to me about um, just taking you back to um, when we first discussed the possibility of doing 
this project in 2018. What was your thinking when you did? What did you think it would be versus what it turned out to be? Well, I wasn't really, I wasn't really sure at that time. My good friend Bob Gums was still alive, and he was part of the Alambe Braff Foundation. And it, it was something that we talked about in meetings, and he would call me about. But we really did not know what to expect until um, we saw the final until we saw the final project. Because as you know, AJAZ, even though the film is titled AJAZ Pioneers of the Black and Beautiful Movement, AJAZ is known for uh, the Black is Beautiful movement, as well as their design sense, their contributions. Several members were part of the, listed as part of the top 50 Black uh, graphic artists in the, in the country at one time. So there were a lot of things. And even though it said Black is Beautiful movement, we just never know what, what could be in it because AJAZ is such an historic organization. If you look at it, it's founded in 1956. So it gives it a very big, long legacy. You, we weren't sure what you had turned up and thus what would be in it. I'm still finding out different and new things all of the time, being contacted by um, people doing work around AJAZ, AJAZ members about certain things. So we were not sure. You know, it was just a pleasant surprise in the end about uh, the final product of what we saw with the documentary. One thing I first of all want to thank you for your support, because if it wasn't for your support and the support of Rob Gums um, and several others, we wouldn't be able to have done this. Um, so we thank you and the family, uh, the Brathwaite family, uh, for their support. And also some of the other people, key members of the team, people who uh, the, you know, we had um, the great Bob Law, um, we had, um, in terms of, we had a, uh, Professor A. Peter Bailey, um, we had um, Tyreen Wright, Dr. Tyreen Wright, and several others, including the uh, phenomenal um, Grandassa models, members of the models uh, who were part of that, telling the story. Uh, so it was a real key thing. And uh, there were so many special moments uh, uh, about doing it. Um, so it really was, a, uh, I, I can't, it's just hard to describe, you know, and I, and I again have to go back and thank uh, Chris Hall because if it wasn't for Chris Hall introducing me back in early 20, uh, 2000s to who, what, where, uh, AJAZ was, what it was about and how it impacted his life. And we'll, you know, in the, in the film, just so I can just give context for those who are not familiar with the film, the film basically chronicles uh, from the inception of AJAZ in uh, 1956, where you had these group of creatives, um, uh, uh, people such as your dad, uh, Ilambe Breath, your uncle, Kwame Brathwaite, um, Bob Gums, uh, as well as uh, Frank Adu Robinson, who was an actor. Um, and uh, let's see, trying to make sure I'm not forgetting anybody. Um, you had Ernest was, Baxter in there. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, excuse me? I, I was mentioning that you had Ernest Baxter. Ernest too. Baxter, who was another actor, part of the, um, uh, the A-Jazz, the, uh, what was the name of the group? A-Jazz Repertory Theater. Repertory Theater, and, and um, many others who basically came together first to preserve, uh, to bring jazz to the Bronx, right? That was one of the main- yeah, to preserve things. jazz as an African uh, art as a, form. As original African art form first, and then through their meetings, interaction with um, the, uh, the great Carlos Cooks and the Garvey movement realized that they took on another mantle looking at uh, validating the unique beauty of the African woman and particularly looking in that with the Grandessa models becoming a key symbol of that. And, and so it takes us to understanding that the challenges that this group of black women who became the, the, uh, the on the vanguard of, of really introducing and really looking at the black uh, community and looking particularly at us, our uniqueness, um, so it takes us to those different points in our history, and it's a real serious history lesson. And it was just interesting, um, and that I remember we had at the um, at the uh, screening on May of twenty May fifteenth, twenty twenty two. We had the uh, one of the the ambassador from 
uh, Barbados. Yeah, the, and, the consulate general from Barbados. Yes, the consulate general. Mackie Holder. His math, yes, Mackie Holder, Holder and his wife. We had um, we had a state senator, okay. Mm -hmm. um, Cordell Clear. Clear, um, back then, Cordell Clear, um, who gave us a um, a very distinct proclamation. Yes, um, right yes. okay, yes, and yes, so. Um, declaring that a jazz day, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and we just had a full house and it was at the historic Dwyer Cultural Center. Uh, so it just couldn't have been better. It was just a wonderful evening. Um, and you know, the interesting thing about it, um, not only, as I said before, it was a real great celebration. People had a chance who hadn't seen each other in years, had a chance to come together and fellowship and then, of course, I think the most interesting thing at all is what happened after um, the, the celebration. After the, um, there was a brother uh, by the name of Evan Bishop and Kitori Parker. Walker. Walker, mm -hmm. who uh, brothers, uh, a male, female, a team, a couple, <laughs> who are artists and um, muralists who were inspired to create a mural on 125th Street. Tell us a little bit about, about how you met them. Oh, well, I, I had known Evan for a long time, but what a lot of people don't know um, that he and I went to college together at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. So I know Evan for a long time. And I I had known that he and Katori Walker, his partner, um, they have their own artistic company. They do all sorts of art. They teach art. They have all these art projects. But I just, I, I never knew that a mural would come forth from this. Day Jazz had incorporated and was doing everything that, uh, if you look at uh, Black Arts Movement and that definition of it, they were already doing all of those things, leading the way for other organizations, other creatives, other artistic people, to do the thing. Again, AJAZ not only had the theater component and the repertory theater, they had their grand asset models. And all, all of them went to, mostly every AJAZ member went, was trained as an artist through the School of Visual Arts at that time. My my father, Elon Bay Brath, was the second um, Black person to integrate the school after the legendary Tom Feelings. And after he got in, it opened up, he did such a good job, it opened up the door for other future AJAZ members, Bob Gums to go, Uncle Kwame, you know, et cetera. So they all come in there. And I think also what made them unique is that training not only was in the artistic, developing them from an artistic standpoint, their strong points, et cetera, but it also uh, gave them to the understand them how to market um, art and what they were doing from a business standpoint. So I, th I think that's one of the things that really made them unique. One of the things that inspired me was uh, as a friend of yours, um, Katori, uh, excuse me, Katori Walker and uh, Evan Bishop, uh, both who came. And by as a response to that, they actually decided to do a mural, um, which is beautiful. We're going to show everyone a mural. We're going to actually give people a chance to hear from them in a moment. My name is Katori Walker and I am an artist, muralist, and I teach art to children. I am Evan Bishop. I am an artist, graphic artist, muralist, um, portrait painter, and I serve the community through my art. Katori and I met um, at, in Westchester. There was a Harlem, arts, uh, Harlem Fine Arts show in Westchester, and um, she came to, to see the art. I was there to showcase my art, and when we got to talking as artists and really, as she said, her Katori kids blew me away. Um, when I saw the, the innocence and the power of those children that she paints, I knew that I wanted to be part of her evolution as an artist. So one thing led to another. We realized that there's a chemistry and power to what we bring. And when we combine our thoughts and ideas and creativity, we're able to really produce some magical things for others. I found out about AJAZ um, through posts. I was following Sinke Brathwaite. Um, I saw that, you know, social media, you begin to see who follows who, and he started posting things. So I knew about it in past, but wasn't really invested in it in a sense of learning more. Um, but he kept on posting things, and finally he 
at the Dwyer Cultural Center, I was able to witness the brilliance of a, of a documentary that um, when we walked out of that documentary, we were kind of stuck. Be I would, well, I would say stuck, but realizing that I was standing on the shoulders of giants that I didn't know. And we realized that it was important to to change the narrative or to, to further the narrative by way of promoting it. I didn't know what was going on. I did not have any clue. I never heard of any jazz before. So this was something really interesting to me. Um, Evan and I have been doing projects over the past eight years together, highlighting seniors, highlighting children, um, getting involved in cultural events. So when he told me about it, I said, oh, wow, you know, I'm really excited to see this documentary. And so when I saw the documentary, I was blown away. Um, I do recall my grandmother who lived to 100 years old, um, just talking about certain things and certain movements like black is beautiful and all those things. So when I saw it, I really was able to understand more. So the process from the inspiration from the documentary to actually putting it on the wall, um, after Katori and I talked about it, of course, I got on the phone with Sinke and really wanted to see how we can use our platforms, use our abilities to further this, you know, this experience. And um, Sinke was all in for, all in with the idea. So what we did is we contacted an organization that curates murals in Harlem called Uptown Grand Central. Yeah, Uptown Grand Central and um, Carrie King, she, um, she put the thumbs up and it was, loved it. she loved it. But, and what was good about it is that this year was like an off season for her curating. And we kind of held a prominent spot on 125th Street. Two spots. Two spots, yeah. Um, <laughs> and we, we, it was good because we didn't want to put it on an off street. We, we realized that right in front of that bus stop, right on 125th Street with thousands of people would go, that's just, you know, coming back from, going back to, to my background of graffiti art, it's about the prime, prime real estate. Where can you get up, where can you put something to make, to force people to see what you have? And so we went through a series of, of sketches and renditions, renderings before we agreed to showcase, show it to Sing K. And I'm a portrait artist. And of course, I, I felt like it was a great challenge to capture the likeness of of these brilliant men, the founders, um, but this wonderful woman who always kind of reels me back into reality, she, yeah. she mentioned the, the ability to take the original photograph that Kwame Brathwaite, I think he's credited for that image, um, that he took and just put it up there. So people don't say, well, who's that, who's that? It's a photo is a photo is a photo, so. It was more than just putting a mural, yeah. just painting a mural and that's it. We wanted it to have, um, uh, we wanted to create a feeling when people look at it. It's big, it's bold, and then there's names on there. We wanted yeah. people to stop. Well, who's that? To ask questions about it. And in doing it, I felt like we were really a part of something that would happened in the past, but now is in the future. It wasn't about art. It was about information. So, you know, changing this, the, the sketch of this beautiful visual thing to just information. So when someone's at the bus stop, when someone's on the bus looking out, when, when some someone's riding the Metro North going across, we've had people say that they can see it. Through Absolutely, the platform. and for That's amazing. and it's about really um, furthering the narrative of, you know, Black is Beautiful did not start when I came on board, and to know from that documentary the history that these revolutionary young people, you know, it started with young people who wanted to use their gifts to further their narrative. And it was inspiring to really, to, to see that process. It was a no brainer for us to give up that spot and we're gonna make sure it stays there as long as that place is. If we have to touch it up, we're there to, to, to do it. So we just, what we do for the community through our art, I think is, is once again, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. So we're just yeah. continuing the, the process. Uh, I just, wanted to now give you an opportunity to talk about something else that's very exciting as a result, that you've been working on a project through the foundation to basically get a street in, um, in the Bronx 
um, named for AJS. Can you tell us about that project and what's happening this month? Yes, yeah, so on September the 23rd at 1230, there is going to be a street co-naming to honor AJAS, the African Jazz Art Society and Studio. That is what AJ, everybody affectionately says AJAS, and AJAS is an acronym for African Jazz Art Society and Studio. So on September 23rd at 1230, right? It does, so the ceremony will take place at the corner of Kelly and Longwood, right? But we'll actually be across the street in front of the school we'll called Longwood Prep, where we'll be having the honoring ceremony right across the street. It's just crossing the street um, because it's just for matters of space to hold the audience. We don't want to, that, that street corner where we're going to unveil the sign is really tiny residential side. So we're going to come over. We'll be right they across the street of the school again, Longwood Prep Academy, formerly PS39 for people who know that area. And we are going to have a ceremony honoring those members of AJAS. Um, most are deceased, but we will have family members, um, et cetera. So AJAS, you know, evolved into a hub, a nucleus for the Bronx, for not just jazz, but music in general. When we talk about jazz, their specialty was bebop. They love bebop. And of course, they had two of the world's greatest jazz performers who helped to push what they were doing in terms of the Black is Beautiful movement from 1961 to like 62 to 64. And that is the legendary Abby Lincoln and the incomparable Max Roach, who were also a couple at the time, and they contributed heavy to AJAS influence, leaving outside of the Bronx and going to different states in the magnitude of these women who were part of AJAS called the Grand Assa Models being featured on album covers of artists like Luke Donaldson, Freddie Roach, leading to national and international magazine covers about Black women, because it was the first time people were getting a chance to see Black women with natural hair. Also, the variety of darker skin tones, getting that sort of exposure and respect that had not been happening in any communities anywhere until AJAS made it a point to emphasize that we are going to have our prototype, not a prototype that's coming out of Europe with models like Twiggy or just out of a white aesthetic. They were going to change all of that. And you, we, AJAS realized you had to change it within your community. This wasn't about what white beauty agencies or whatever like that were doing. In fact, AJAS was, although they had models, the models were for our community. It's going to be from 1230 to when's to two 2 hours 30. to 1230 yeah, to 230. Okay. So people really need to get there to, if they want a seat and whatever, and if they have. Well, some people will be saying that we don't have seats for everybody. We'll probably have about 75 seats. We have several uh, elected officials who've been invited. We have, I mentioned some of the speakers from different historical societies and documentarians as well as um, family members and granddad. So we probably, for the general public, we'll probably have about 30 seats. But they, the way that, the way it's constructed, it's really open. And, I, and, the, and the rest of everybody will be in the back of what, like the podium area. It's going to be a fantastic day. It's going to be historic. Yeah. Of course, the street naming is historic anyway, because it's mm -hmm. for a lifetime. But just to be there, to see that happen, that sort of ceremony. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal is to share the history in everybody who witnesses brains. And so, you know, it's just so uh, exciting to know. And as you said, every one of the, the, the key AJAS members were artists, visual artists, or they were actors, or mm -hmm. they were in some, or they're musicians or art, you know, visual. So main thing is that they, excuse me, not new musicians, but basically artists and teachers in their, in their own right, because they taught the culture through their art form. So it's really going to be a great opportunity to witness history for those who may be familiar with AJAS or may not be familiar, but just want to know more. If somebody wanted to contact you, is there a contact number or a yeah. email address where someone could get information? 
Well, one of the, the number they will call is 646-694-8139. Say that again. 646-694-8139. If they wanted to go to social media, they could go to the Facebook page for the Lombe Brad Foundation, or they can go to the Instagram page, which is AJAS1956, the acronym for the organization, A-J-A-S-S, the year it was found in 1956 on Instagram. So those are three ways, the phone number, face, Facebook, and, you know, directly toward AJAS stuff on, on social media. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to say one last thing, Louise. So, you know, you mentioned about Barbados. It's very appropriate that it was screened there um, in Barbados because as some film people I know, that area of the Bronx was of uh, at that time uh, which AJAS was being born and these members were going there. AJAS, um, that part of the Bronx rather, had a large immigrant community from the Caribbean. My and my uh, grandparents, my father's, uh, both of their parents were both from Barbados. And that's where, although my father uh, was born in Brooklyn, he grew up in that time in the South Bronx right there, as well as uh, several AJAS members uh, from mm -hmm. the Bronx. So it's just so appropriate that um, for his first international screening that it was Barbados. Definitely. Well, look, I'm excited. And I, again, uh, got to get hats off to you and the organization for your support of this. I'm very excited and happy to be part of this uh, experience and excited for everyone. And we encourage you to uh, those in the audience to take advantage of this opportunity to witness history with the uh, unveiling of AJAZ Way. I understand it's AJAZ Way. Um, and to really get a chance to see the film. But again, um, I want to thank you so much for joining us uh, today. And uh, we look forward for more information about this award-winning film and the next steps to a lot of exciting things happening around AJAZ and its members. Well, listen, I know you're, you're a mover and a shaker, Sinke. It's great to have you here with us today. And we look forward to opportunity to talk to you again soon. But until next time, my audience, I want to thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate you spending this opportunity. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this broadcast and we continue to encourage you to tune in, to write, and to tell a friend. But until next time, Louise Dente saying thank you. Mm -hmm.